Hey there TPS fans, Aaron here. And you're probably wondering, who the heck is Aaron? Well, I'm TPS's newest addition, and I'm here to bring you a new segment called Oh Yeah They Did That, where we look back at some of the craziest feats in sports that you may have forgotten all about. Feel free to drop me a line in the comments section, let me know how you like the new segment, or just tell me how great my voice sounds. Anyway, to kick off the first edition of Oh Yeah They Did That, we're going to talk about an NFL player that actually played blind in the Super Bowl and still won MVP. Now at this point, some of you may be wondering who the heck we're talking about. Well guess what? We're not going to give you the answer that easily. We're going to make you work a little for it, but we're also going to help break it down for you. So play along and see if you can guess who it is. Okay, so what do we know about this mystery NFL player who, despite not being able to see during the game, still won Super Bowl MVP honors? Well, there have only been 47 different Super Bowl MVPs in 54 Super Bowls, since we have guys like Tom Brady who have taken home four of them himself. But either way, we know it's one of these 47 dudes. But who? Of these guys, which could have played blind? Judging by this pass from Terry Bradshaw, who, by the way, was the first and only quarterback to win MVP honors after throwing more interceptions and touchdowns, you might think it was him. But what we can tell you is that our mystery man is not a quarterback. I mean, come on now. What are the chances a quarterback plays in a Super Bowl without being able to see and still wins MVP? No way that's happening. Okay. We've narrowed it down a little bit here, as 30 of the winners were quarterbacks, so that leaves 17 remaining candidates. Of course, it couldn't have been a defensive player either, or a wide receiver for that matter. I signed as just too important at those positions. Imagine Tyree Kill blazing down the field to track down a 40-yard bomb from Patrick Mahomes, the most recent Super Bowl MVP, and when he looks up to the heavens to track the pass into his hands, he sees nothing. Not possible. Maybe an offensive lineman, but that would require an offensive lineman actually win Super Bowl MVP. Which is yet to happen, and in all likelihood, it never will. So that leaves just one viable position. The running backs. There have been seven running backs to take home the Pete Rosell Trophy. The first being Larry Sonka for the Miami Dolphins way back in 1974. Which, by the way, he certainly deserved as the Dolphins quarterback, Bob Greasy, only attempted seven passes. Anyways, since Sonka's 145-yard and two-touchdown performance, we've seen the likes of Franco Harris, Emmett Smith, and Marcus Allen win the award. All Hall of Famers with godlike resumes, but none of them can lay claim to winning the big game blind. That unique distinction belongs to none other than the MVP of Super Bowl 32. Do you remember that one? It was a tightly contested game that came down to a few pivotal fourth quarter plays and was capped off by two powerful runs by our Roselle Award winner, Terrell Davis. Now, if you're wondering what happened to Davis that he couldn't see, and why then Broncos coach Mike Shanahan decided to stick with the TD, don't worry, we're about to get into that. Let me set the scene for you real quick. The historically snake-bitten Broncos, who had lost all four of their previous Super Bowl appearances, including three with John Elway at the helm, snuck into the playoffs as a wildcard team, but finished the regular season with a solid 12-4 record. Even so, after a dominant win over the Jacksonville Jaguars during Wild Card Weekend, the Broncos narrowly edged out the Chiefs and Steelers in the subsequent two rounds by a combined seven points. Not to mention, they were going up against a juggernaut and defending Super Bowl champion, the Green Bay Packers. Green Bay came into the game as an 11.5 point favorite and had been dominant all season long, compiling a 13-3 record and easily defeating their first two playoff opponents. The first being the Tampa Bay Buccaneers by a score of 21 to 7, and the second being the San Francisco 49ers by a score of 23 to 10. Needless to say, the Broncos had their hands full with this one. To make matters worse, the team's leading rusher, and the NFL's as well for that matter, Terrell Davis, ended up playing most of the game with severely impaired vision. Davis had suffered from severe migraines since he was a kid. It got so bad that he was prescribed heavy-duty meds to help prevent them from coming on. There is much about migraines that most people who don't suffer from them fail to understand. For starters, they're not just bad headaches, which the general public tends to categorize them as. Yes, there is a pulsing or throbbing headache, typically in one specific area of the head, but there's also a litany of other symptoms that can plague migraine sufferers. It can be everything from unexplained mood changes, to exhaustion, to fluid retention, and the most severe of migraine sufferers can experience what is known as the aura phase. 
which distorts the victim's vision in a number of ways. Uh, some people start to see zigzag lines or the brightness flicker, and in some cases, it can be so overwhelming that they are temporarily blinded by the intense brightness. This is exactly what happened to Terrell Davis on the biggest stage imaginable. While there is no cure for migraines, there is a variety of medicines that are prescribed to people that suffer from chronic migraines, it's something that was a normal part of Davis's pregame routine. This was vital for Davis as migraines can easily be triggered by stress, loud noises, overexertion, and physical trauma. All of which are on par for the course when you play professional football. Anyway, every game day before taking the field, Davis would take his medication with his morning meal to limit his risk. But somehow, on the day of the biggest game of his life, he forgot. Preoccupied with all of the preparation, he completely blanked on taking his medication and didn't even realize he hadn't taken it until early in the game, when he took a defender's knee to the top of his helmet that set off a vicious migraine. I get kicked. I remember just feeling a thump on top of my head. And I think Davis may be shaken up. Terrell Davis is on both knees. Davis described it as such. I remember it was just like a blunt force, like bam, and it just kind of rocked my world. My vision starts to go out again. And I'm thinking, oh, no, not again. Like, this is the worst time. Come on, because I know what's about to happen. About to get a migraine. Shortly after the migraine took hold of the star running back, his vision went, and the defenders coming at him all looked like a blur darting at him. Listen to how Davis described the realization of Mike Hill on My Big Game Moment. Nothing is clear. It's just everything is, is in pieces, and you can, you can identify things. And I, can, I just remember in my mind just saying, no, 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 not now. I can only imagine how harrowing it must have been for the young Davis, who was just 25 at the time and had only played two seasons in the league up to that point. He went up to Coach Shanahan and explained what was going on, and spent most of the second quarter on the bench, with a damp towel drooped over his head. The Broncos were driving, though, and when presented with a crucial third down and goal opportunity from the Packers' one-yard line, Shanahan took a calculated risk and threw Davis in the game. I said, Mike, I can't see. I need to let you know. Of course, he says, well, TD, you don't need to see, but we need you in the game. Because if you're not in the game, they won't believe we're going to run the ball. Craftily designing a fake handoff to TD in order to open up a late lane for Elway so he could punch in the one-yard touchdown, giving the Broncos a 14-7 lead. Knowing that the Super Bowl halftime intermission was significantly longer than a regular season's games was, Shanahan pulled Davis from the game and sent him to the locker room to start receiving treatment hoping that since they caught it early, they could wait it out if they prevented further aggravation. What are you doing? Why don't you go in? Why don't you go in for the half, relax a little bit, do it after the half either way. The team's training staff got the running back a different medicine, migranal nasal spray, a product designed to be taken on the onset of a migraine, and they kept him in a dark room with limited noise to try and let him recover. They strapped an oxygen mask to his face, and then it was the waiting game. They needed the symptoms to loosen their grip on the completely incapacitated Davis. The team was understandably panicked. The coaching staff started preparing for the rest of the game as though they weren't going to have the NFL's leading rusher back in action. During halftime, one of his offensive linemen, Tony Jones, found Davis and pleaded with him, reportedly saying, Man, we really need you. I know your headaches are back, but you have to have those headaches tomorrow. We've got a Super Bowl to win. Following halftime, he felt he had recovered enough to give it a go, so Davis barely ventured back out onto the gridiron, eager to do his part to put away a resilient Packard side, who only trailed 17 to 14 and was ready to capitalize on TD's absence. Up to this point, he had already notched 54 yards and one touchdown, and no one would have blamed him if he was ineffective in the second half. I mean, the fact that he was able to get himself out there at all was a testament to his insane grit and determination. Think about it, the guy could hardly see, and the NFL game moves so fast, especially in the Super Bowl, it must have been terrifying to go back out there. But Davis refused to let his circumstance determine his fate. Now let's just say, Davis was ready to answer the bell. He came out of the locker room after halftime with a look that the teammate Derek Lowville described as a deep stare. He continued to explain Davis' aura when he returned to action, saying, It was a look like, I'm coming back, and I'll be even more effective. Although Davis did lose a fumble on his first carry of the second half, it turned out that Lowville read the situation perfectly as Davis exploded in a tightly contested second half. 
After the fumble, he picked up 90 more rushing yards, including a handful of pivotal conversions and two more touchdowns. Perhaps more importantly, Davis was there when the Broncos needed him most. The game tied and there's only three minutes and 27 seconds left on the clock. With the Ghost of Super Bowls past haunting Elway, the Broncos leaned on Davis during the crucial drive. Despite the fact that the Packers' defense was honed in on the burly running back, Davis drew a critical 15-yard face mask penalty from Packers linebacker Darius Holland that moved the Broncos into field goal range. And once a holding penalty pushed the Broncos back to the 18-yard line, it was Davis's number they called again, and he rewarded them handsomely with a 17-yard run to get down to the 1-yard line. From there, he would power through the Packers' goal line defense to break the tie and give the Broncos a 31-24 lead with 1 minute and 45 seconds left on the clock. That final rundown gave him three touchdowns and a total of 157 rushing yards to cap off an unreal performance, especially considering that he couldn't even see. Can't see. Okay, just do this. You don't worry about seeing on this place because we're going to fake it to you the 15 lead. But if you're not in there, they won't believe we're going to throw the ball. That's why he'll always be remembered as the NFL star who played in a Super Bowl blind and still won MVP. What is your greatest Terrell Davis memory? Join us in the comment section below. If you liked the video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps us out a ton and we really appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.